So I'm a child of the 80s, and like a lot of kids back then, I grew up loving the Lamborghini Countach. One of the few Hot Wheels I actually remember buying as a child, that in the Micro Machines version. Even back then, I remember feeling like they really didn't do the car justice. The back tires are wrong, as they're always set way too far inside the wheel wells, making the car look sort of strange. And typically, they only had one color paint jobs and no tampos. Somehow, Mattel made one of the coolest cars ever made bland. So I thought it would be fun to take one of these bland LP400S cars and turn it into an LP400, my personal favorite version of the car. The original LP400 did not have the wing or the wheel arch extensions around the car, giving it a much smoother and cleaner look. So what I would like to do in this video is convert this car back into the LP400 and try to add some realism as I go. So the first thing I'm going to do is start filing off the wheel arch extensions. For simplicity, I'll just call them fender flares. You can use a small file like I am here, or move to a Dremel with a barrel sander, which is what I'm going to do once I figure out in a few minutes that filing this off with this little bitty file would take all day. I'm using this specific car as it's one of the versions that has the wing cast in. Other versions of this car would have small rivets where these two squares are and would require some other work to get them to look right. As I said before, this version of the car did not have the wing, so I'll use some wire cutters to clip the wing off. I'll then use a file and some sandpaper to remove the rest of the wing and flush everything up. I've also done some aggressive sanding on the bottom front of the car. Everything hasn't lined up yet, but it's starting to get there. Also, I have the heavy sanding done on the fender flares and will now move to a small file and sandpaper to remove the rest. So at this point, I have the fender flares removed and the next step is to remove the rest of the paint. I left the paint on up to this point as it offers up some protection for the other areas I don't want to scratch up. But now I need to get the paint out of the way. With the paint removed, I can now start working on the car's panel lines. If you're into modeling, then this step will be familiar. If not, then what I'm doing here is using a dental pick to scribe the existing panel lines and remove material and make them deeper. This particular model suffers from very shallow panel lines. In fact, I have several of them where the panel lines on the hood can't be seen at all as the paint filled them in. This is one of those steps that can really make your work stand out compared to someone who has skipped this step. Once the lines have been scribed, I'll go over the car with some light sandpaper and then prime the upper body. The primer will help show any defects in my filing work and show any areas that might need to be filled. At this point, I need to apologize as I upgraded my lighting and now my shutter speed is causing some flicker issues with the LED lights I bought, so now I have dark bands. I have since fixed the issue, but I didn't notice until editing that I had messed up. Sorry about that. With the upper body primed, I can now focus on the base. The base has these raised areas with all the circles in it. I'm going to be lowering this car later and need as much space on the bottom as I can get, so I'll be sanding all this raised area off with a small belt sander. I'll also be doing some more sanding on the front part of the base. As I said before, I'm going to lower this car. The Lamborghini was a car that sits very low to the ground, and I'm also lowering it as I want to round off the fenders. And for this to look correct, I need the wheels to be higher up to take up the space I'll be creating. To accomplish this, I'm using a 1 16th inch rod that has an inner diameter that it just so happens to accept the wire axles Mattel uses. The rod will be cut and then sanded to size to fit the V-notch in the base of this car. I will glue in the rod using super glue. I can sand the V-notch if I would like in order to move the wheel down further. However, I found in this case that this was not necessary. Once the glue is cured, I will go ahead and place the wheels and axles in the rods, but I will not glue them in yet. I will then place the upper body on and start to get an idea of what needs to be removed. I'll use a barrel sander on my Dremel to slowly remove material until the base can be joined to the upper body and the wheels can spin. Or at least that's what I had hoped would happen. Instead, I found that I could spin the wheels while holding the car, but setting the car down, there was just enough play in the wheel, rod, axle assembly to cause the wheel to move up slightly and hit the upper part of the wheel wells. I decided to just let this happen, as I care more about how the car looks than if I can roll it down the track. 
Plus I got what I wanted in that the fenders are nice and round instead of the asymmetrical shape they were before. Once the wheels are good, I can remove them and then move on to the next step, painting. I'm going to go for that metallic paint look on this car, so the first thing I'll do is paint it shiny silver. After about two days of dry time, I will then airbrush over the silver paint with a transparent green acrylic paint. Last, I'll decant some Tester's Gloss Clear Coat and then spray that through the airbrush to finish the paint effect. You must spray it through the airbrush for this to work. If you spray it from the can, you'll just get a gloss clear coat and not the metallic effect you're going for. Once the clear coat dries, I can come back and airbrush in all the other details using the spray and wipe method. On the back, I'll use some testers enamel to put in the tail lights. This will finish off the upper part of the car, so now I can finish the base. To finish off the base, I need to glue in the axles to the rod. To do this, I place a small amount of super glue on the end of the axle and then place it in the rod. I will then use a small wire or some other sharp object to shove the axle into the wheel. Once the wheels are in, I set the base aside to cure. After a few days of drying and curing, the car is ready to go back together. Now this is about as close as I thought I could get to the LP400. I was able to fix the issues that were bothering me about the original car, like being able to see through the car by looking through the spaces between the back tire and wheel well. There are no see-through points on this car. I don't have a problem with the fender flares or wings on the real car, but I feel that they were poorly executed on this die-cast model Mattel made. In fact, the whole car is of dubious quality. For example, the wire they use for the axles is thinner than the wire they use today. This and the fact that they use a center axle crimping method to hold the axles in place, it's no wonder why these cars are so hard to find without bent axles. Anyways, that's my rant on the Hot Wheels Countach from the 1980s. If you have any questions about this model, feel free to ask them below. As always, you can give me your thoughts or criticisms below. I try to respond to both. Ratings are also appreciated, and thanks for watching.